Oh, I love that shield. It's terrible, but I love it. Uh, the the piggy shield, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this is some obscure in joke. Yeah, uh, it's it's one of the. I don't know if they would have read it or not, but uh, you know what that made me think of the first time I saw it was I read uh, Ivanhoe back in the day, and there's a scene where because one of the main characters Isaac uh, Isaac the Jew, uh, one of the one of the I think Jester Wumpa to taunt him like you know says his, his here's a shield of of uh, pork and like branches it at him and, and drives him off. I know that's, that's all they're going for, but that's what that would be, made me think of. Mm. Oh, I remember <laughs> trying to read uh, Ivanhoe years ago, but it, the mm. translation I had was so full of Z's and thou's. Ooh, right, I right. actually couldn't work out who was doing what to whom. <laughs> Speaking of doing, doing something to whom, the reason why I'm dealing with this guy is that I don't know if, it, if it's a thing of just me you know, trying to get too much room in the fight or, or the, the aggro range being a bit, or the, the basically the, the, the hearing being a bit better in the original game. But he kept interfering with my duel with a smelter demon, or not a smelter demon, their pursuer. And so I ended up just having to start picking him off before I started fighting him. And it took me three tries to beat the pursuer. And yeah, the first two times I would be doing okay. Then he'd run in and start, uh, just start you know, shooting at me with his uh, with a bow. Yeah, I, I think it's probably you, because, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, because, you know, I've never had him, never had him interfere in a pursuer fight in either original or scholar. Okay. Well, um, so no, I think it's just getting too close to him, making too much noise. Yeah, that is probably it. I, I do use a lot of magic and, of course, using the, the heavier weapons. Like this time, since I already had the pursuer great sword, and this is the only time you rematch him in the, in the original game. Unlike in Scholar, where you fight him, like, I think four freaking times in the Bastille. Yeah. I figure, let's go ahead and do a proper Pursuer Sword versus Pursuer Sword. Uh, he does make another re a return in Grand Lake Castle with a buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I think that's true in both of them, though, right? If you, I think if so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said, yeah. So this isn't his only reappearance in the original game. Good point. Speaking of uh, forgetting things, I'm kind of kicking myself, but you remember how in uh, Earth and Peak we were talking about uh, which enemies to do Toxic, and I thought that only um, only Nashka did, and I forgot about the rats in uh, Doors of Pharos. They do Toxic. Yep. Uh, bad rats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about when we get to that, that stage. <laughs> It's an interesting stage, Doors of Pharos, and uh, what we'll hope to do is actually show you the gimmick of the Rat Covenant areas, because uh, mm -hmm. I, was way too, I was way too high and cleared the area too fast in Grave of Saints. Uh, spoilers. Right, right. That's, yeah, we're doing, we're doing the Grave of Saints, Gutter, Black Gulch next time. And Ma, Ma gotta have to, you know, Mama had to have her uh, Puzzling Stone sword, so... <laughs> They're going to show you the gimmicks of the rat areas. It's an interesting invasion gimmick. It's not one that's been done before in the Souls game. Yeah, I really like it. Right. Yeah, there, there are some interesting things they do to mess up with the formula with invasions. Like one of my favorite uh, fights is still Demon Souls with the the old monk. Yeah, they could pull in. Oh yeah, that, that, that is, that's an impressive mm -hmm. thing. If somebody gets pulled in, that's really impressive. Right, right. And uh, they kind of do. There, there's a nod to it. With the with the boss of uh, Drangleia Castle, actually, that uh, that that will also try to show off, or at least you know, a mug might be able to. That's something that mm. obviously I can't do uh, offline. I think how that one works is it, it doesn't pull people randomly. So you have to put a red sign near it. Right, right. And it'll pull in people who've put that red sign down. Right. And uh, speaking of invaders and aggro and stuff like that, yeah, it's uh, there. Be, what, the, this this one, the room that Mog was looking at goes from uh, two turtles only, which is pretty easy to pull one of them and then deal with the other one, to a turtle and two knights. So it's obviously it's a lot trickier. And this knight at the end who can sh go for you if he notices you, though mainly right. he's looking down into the courtyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the one thing that, that makes the, the law knight such a pain, of course, is we're seeing those... See, you saw us got hit a couple times with those uh, great bows, you know, the, the, the javelins they shoot, basically. And uh, it's yeah, it can, it, like there's been a couple times, especially early on, where if you're like you're fighting one or two enemies, one of them will hit you because their their detection range on arrows is so much better now in uh, Dark Souls Two than it was in One that they will stun you and then the, the other enemies will finish you off. Now, the reason I'm basically I'm shooting this guy because if you distract him, he never hits the bridge. Right. 
Whereas if he gets you fighting the knight, he'll start hammering on the bridge. Yeah, it's, it's a, one of those things, that's, it's a really cool touch that the game only does you know, in this area. You, know, you think that it would be kind of cool if the enemies with the giant hammers and stuff like that could do environmental damage more often, or if you could, but, uh, but it, only, it only, only comes up this one time. That I can remember, anyway. You know? yeah, so, yeah, this is one of the most ridiculously video gamey levels in the entire <laughs> game. Um, yeah, I the... mean, it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense even if you take into consideration that it was a castle that sunk. It right. still makes no sense. I mean, where's, where's that lava flowing from? <laughs> the bit we're in now isn't under lava. No, it's, uh, yeah, we're actually above the, uh, the lava fields. You know, we we are actually up the stairs and a little bit higher than the than the smelter and the furnace and stuff like that. So yeah, it's like yeah, where is? I, no, I don't I, know. I admit, you know, it's fantasy and all that, but the Dark Souls series has mostly been very good about making sense. Right. <laughs> you know, the the uh, few bits that don't, like you know, strictly like uh, the Great Hollow, and all right. that. They they to me they they work because it's it's a passage into an underworld. It's not mm -hmm. you're not traveling into a real place anymore at that point. It, so it doesn't right, have yeah. to match up geographically. Mm -hmm. But this is clearly supposed to be an actual real place. Right, and you can go to you can kind of go into the past of it with the Ashen Tower and uh, the DLC, and it's just as ridiculous, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it was just yeah they they just they just you know didn't really go for consistency in in this part and. Uh, no, 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 it is consistent. It's consistently ridiculous. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I like that. So this and is the door to the Belfi Soul, the counterpart to Belfi Luna. Yeah, kind of interesting that they're both uh, warded off with those, uh, the Pharaoh's contraptions. Well, it was a secret relationship. Oh, you're right, you're they right. They don't want anybody else going to their secret signal Belfies. That, that kind of like make, makes me consider... Um, uh, Pharaoh says to this kind of like um, yeah like what's the term for it like somebody who knows everybody's secrets and you know keeps it for them you know uh -huh. some kind of some kind of fixer you know yeah kind of <laughs> I don't I don't know the exact term I was, I was oddly enough I was thinking about the uh, fire in Romeo and Juliet who you know helps Romeo and Juliet sort oh, yeah, see yeah. each other and eventually ends up just but I mean, he didn't really mess anything up it's more misinformation led to them getting both being dead. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we, yeah, we mentioned within the, the Earth and Peak video, uh, trying to you know, like the whole relationship with you know, the, what was the Iron King and Mitha, was it something else? Were, were they the, the, the Alka and Ven, the prince and princess that the, the, bell, the, uh, the bell guardians are referring to? Because there was, there was like the 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 implication early on, the fan the fandom kind of assumed they were, and then it's you know not not turns out not to be the case. But yeah, of course there was a lot of uh, thought about that uh, that Aldia was a character in this game too that ended up you know from completely. Uh, and we'll find out after the fourth old one what what from did with that theory. <laughs> yes. So yeah, you got here. You've got the same little dwarves. You've got ballistas scattered around. Mm -hmm. Which are very, very useful. Oh yeah, and uh, and the reason why I'm joining the the reason why I joined the you, you might have been wondering you've seen that top left there that I'm in the Brotherhood of Blood. You're know, like, well, that's the Invader Covenant. Why would you join that? And it's because joining every covenant the, the first time you do gives you a ring, and in this case, the the Brotherhood of Blood gives you a ring that increases your bleed effect. So that's that's why I joined them, and then I joined back to the the Belfry Covenant. Because you have to be a member in order for an in, for order for an invader to spawn uh, here, that I'll be I'll be showing off uh, shortly. But her staff is ridiculous. It looks like a really sort of ratty umbrella. <laughs> I just you know, noticed that now. Yeah, it looks like a really ratty umbrella. Her staff. Well, people in the stream are asking you to do a hobo Mary Poppins. So maybe you should go get a Spitfire spear and, and use that. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Spitfire Spear is the Guardian Dragon's soul item, so that's like much later in the game. Uh, but yeah, and, and speaking of that, uh, the, the witch that uh, that we've been, we were fighting, uh, she has a chance to drop the what's it the 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 mask or the veil? I think the Black Witch yeah. veil. Yeah. And there's another NPC, another another one-time invader 
up top that can drop a, a mask, you know, the domino mask. And there, there were a lot of videos on YouTube, like back in the day when the game came out in 2014. They were like, how do I get these items? Because they're one-time spawns. And yeah, it, was, it basically came down to take a, take a bunch of bonfire ascetics, max out your item discovery, and kill them over and over and over. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, that's not the sort of thing I do. No. <laughs> but I think she also drops a staff that lets you cast everything. Uh, well, uh, I, you, you mentioned that, and I double checked that one, and she doesn't drop the. the she doesn't drop staff. it, okay. Yeah, it's only, only the, the veil. Right, yeah, only the witches in, uh, in the Undead Crypt that can drop it. Ah, okay. Because, uh, was it the. I know you can, some people, you can buy her dress, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, um, the, source, the royal sorcerer sells, sells that stuff. And she's, she's actually got the, I think the astrologist hat, which is my favorite hat. You know, just, I just really love the, the classic, you know, um, the classic sorcerer's floppy apprentice. Wizard hat, you know. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> and you get another one of these guys with the, the one half of a, the, like the, the linked uh, great shields and great sword. And uh, yeah, as always, there, this guy isn't quite as bad as the one in. Undead Purgatory and and Mog is good and Mog's really good about uh, getting behind those guys and backstabbing them. I'm, I'm not I'm just a little little impressed every time you you, you pull that off. <laughs> hey, it's uh, it's one way of fighting them. <laughs> and uh, this is and I was looking around the corner there to see if the the Mad Warrior had spawned yet, and there he is. He 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 he's basically right inside the or right right outside the tower with the ladder in it and there's a couple ways of doing it like you can see i have the unveil uh, spell currently and if you kill every other enemy between between you and him uh then the unveil spell will start tracking will start heading toward him and basically if it starts going up then in that direction you know he's there whereas if it uh, if it starts going the other way like toward the enemies in iron keep you know he's not so yeah just spent a lot of time you know, fighting fighting the dwarves and, and extincting them, so I could so I could do that. Because otherwise, you have to go up the ladder, down the ladder, up the ladder, down the ladder. <laughs> Whereas w once you've extincted the dwarves, you can just rest, cast, rest, cast. Is that right? Exactly right. Yeah, and it's kind of funny. It's like you, there, there are so many people were obsessed with farming him because he's the only source for his uh, most. I think most people want the the dreadlock or predator hat. Uh, but uh, between that and he, he has the Berserker Blade, which is a good uh, katana with, with Twinkleys. That's the one I end up getting from him. I decide I'm, I'm going to farm the guy until I get one item from him. And then, so that's what, that happens to be the one I get, luckily. But uh, Does his blade have the gimmick where it damages you? Or is that that's no. a later form? No, that's, that's a Chaos Blade, right? That's no, the no, there's one, in this, there's one in Dark Souls 2 that's got the same gimmick. Oh, uh, might be, yeah. I think actually, no, I think it's in the I think it's in the shrine of Amana. It's quite hidden uh, away. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be right. There's the uh, if you're thinking of the the manslayer at the end of the shrine, uh, that just does poison damage. Right. I'm sure there's one that does damage you. Uh, well, well, the chaos blade damages you on hit. Is that the one you're thinking of? Yeah, but it's not in this, is it? Yeah, it is. It's, oh, it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, when if you get the yeah. I, I think we mentioned that uh, if you fight, if you go back and if you fight the four old ones in a second cycle and, and, and every cycle after the second. Oh one, yeah, right? yeah, that's right. You get yeah. it in you get it in the by doing that, but it doesn't exist as a normal thing. You have to go right. out of your way to get it. Yeah, you have to you have to trade the old witch's soul to uh, Ornifex. Yeah, if if you fight the great old ones a second time, you get their equivalent souls from the first game. Mm -hmm. Which is a really cool touch. I, I liked how they kind of tied in like that, and uh, it kind of makes me wonder how much the they may have changed the the designs for the bosses around to kind of accommodate that. Because you can definitely tell the, the tell the parallels between the uh, between the, the rotten and Nito, especially mm -hmm. uh, I, old Iron King and Gwyn, not so much. You know that that one's kind of that's a bit tenuous. Was, that's just fire, right? And to be honest, the spider and sea well, I guess no spider and cease also makes sense because it's all seems to be a bit about a lot of experimentation going on there if you look at the spider hybrids in, right in Seldora. that that doesn't yep. that doesn't make as that makes a bit more sense i guess mm -hmm. yeah but, see, but the really, see themes kind of mad science right <laughs> yeah but the clear parallels are obviously sinner and witch and right. rotten and nito yeah 
and, and uh, just and uh, there's a little game mechanic section. So you notice I cast Iron Flesh, and if you if you're familiar with it from Dark Souls One, it gives you a nice boost to, to poison defense. And what happened this time was that I cast it, and I, I still got stunned by the the triple uh, arrow attack. And the reason being, in Dark Souls Two, it raises your maximum poise, but it won't refill until you, until you get a, until you get an event that refills it, like a getting hit, a getting your poise to zero, and then reset. Otherwise, it just gradually fills in slowly, and it hadn't you know, filled back in yet. So that may, and the fact that it only lasts thirty seconds, you know, it's a, it's, it was already kind of a marginal spell, and it's really marginal in in two. I mean, to be honest, the only thing I've ever used it for in one is face tanking the four kings. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> because because you know, quite frankly, I can't dodge that. So just put on havels, put on iron flesh, and face tank them. Right. <laughs> And speaking of, of, of casting spells to buff yourself and face tank, I haven't I haven't abused it yet, but up until I think like five patches into the game, you could stack uh, personal buffs on yourself. That'd be the equivalent of using like Power Within and Iron Flesh at the same time in Dark Souls One. And well, of course, well not quite as much because there aren't any buffs in Two that are as good as Power Within was. But uh, but yeah, you can you can definitely uh, you can definitely do that, and a lot of people did. You know. It, there's some if you ever see game facts or old posts about PvP from back in uh, the first couple months of the game, it's like you know should I should I let the guy spend thirty seconds buffing up or not? <laughs> it was a PvP always, adequate. No, there is no. <laughs> one there is there is one solution for e Bushido, my friend, and it is dunk pies. <laughs> nice, I like that. <laughs>
the mug, just, mug there just got the Immolation Pyromancy. You would think that would be the coolest spell ever. You light yourself on fire to do more damage to enemies, but it does so much more damage to you than it does to them, it's just not worth it. Yeah, setting yourself on fire is a bit like summoning giant snakes. It never helps. <laughs> right! <laughs> Actually, funny enough, I don't have it, but in Bloodborne there is an item that lets you summon effectively a giant snake head. Really? I think oh. it's quite easy to get yourself eaten by your giant snake. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. 